Hello? Hey, hello. Yo, dude, how you doing? I'm fine, how are you? I am wonderful. I ate yogurt and fruit, and I'm streaming. And now I'm coaching my boy, Impri. It's going to be a good time. Yeah. It's very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what... Am I, I, uh, I know last time we talked was, it's been a while, I think it's been probably like six months or something. I stopped uh, playing for like nine months. Okay. Yeah, it's been longer, I guess. Uh, you were diamond last time we talked, right? Yeah. And I'm actually diamond three again. Okay. Because I didn't play for nine months. So I didn't remember any build. <laughs> sure. That sucks. <laughs> I'll, yeah. try, I'll try and help you. <laughs> <laughs> So, you, uh, is there anything in particular you're looking for here? Because we, I know this is a very impromptu coaching lesson. Uh, otherwise, I'll just kind of take the reins. It's still a, a, a Zerg problem, I guess. Okay. And PvP is actually my worst matchup right now. Okay. I don't know why it was my best the last time I played it. Sure. It happens. Um, I mean, it, it can fluctuate for sure. It happens. Yeah. I'm so afraid of expanding in PvP. This is, so I, is everybody I going, died to macro repeatedly. Is everybody going for like blink stalker charge all ins on you? That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They usually go just Skytos. Oh, I like it. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I saw you uh, coach someone uh, uh, versus Cirque. Sure. With a uh, adept timing. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. I... And that's actually the replay I sent you. Oh, sure. Okay. So it's PVZ with the adept timing. So that yeah. that build is very particular. And we'll, I, we can break it down and like talk about what makes it important. Um, but if your adepts are late, it makes the build really, really bad. Uh, so yeah. what I'll do for you is I will... I'll have you actually just watch this through Discord rather than on Battle.net uh, since you sent me the replay. It makes it super easy. Uh, so on Discord, just hit uh, watch or uh, there should be like a video button. You should see it. And then now you can actually see the game from my perspective. So yeah. What, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So whenever I explain shit, you'll be able to see how I move my mouse and stuff. Um, all right. So let's let's see what's going on here for you, Impri. Okay, let's let's find out. Let's Let's get to the bottom of this for you. Um, yeah, so timing for this build is definitely uh, of the utmost importance. Like, you don't want to waste time, and there is a moment where you need to cut probes for this to work properly. We'll talk about okay. that when you get there. And so far, you're fine. Nothing's bad. Gateway is good. Corona boost on your Nexus right after the gateway is good. Your gas is late, though. So, what you should do get this in the habit of your builds again when you make a gateway and then you chrono boost your probe your probe will uh be just starting as you make the gateway because you're waiting for the pylon to finish anyways it's like that you like that brief moment where you're not really supply blocking but it, you know it's a normal build especially when you're playing yeah. against zerg and you build a pylon at the natural so it's a little further away but if you don't build this second probe in the nexus and you just build your gas and then you catch back up with the probe you will still not waste any time and then you'll just have a faster gas. And this is huge okay. for this kind of a build because as you can see, you're already about to be able to afford a gas and your probes aren't even done yet. Yeah. Yeah. So make sure you're doing that from now on because that would just put your gas like 12 seconds faster than what it is now. Roughly, or like, like 10 seconds faster. Uh, yeah. Be pretty huge for you. I still think with this build though, you, should, you shouldn't rip off the gas with like mineral probes but this first probe could already be mining by the time it's done so it's just like it's gonna get like two extra trips essentially yeah. uh your scout it really doesn't need to see much i mean you can stay in his base so okay it, actually it's not what i said i completely is, forgot about the probe no it's it's okay uh I, I i was gonna say what i said actually kind of is not true where i said your scout doesn't matter much as long as he expands it actually does matter a little bit and the reason why is because if your opponent is going to go for an all-in and you're opening up council, it actually be, can be kind of fucking scary, especially if it's going to be like a roach-based all-in um, mm -hmm. because council is not the most ideal tech opener to deal with all-ins. 
So if you catch wind of what looks like an all-in, I would say a good unit you could probably add into your composition would be either Stalker or bat or, uh, or a Sentry with a battery. So you could either like force field the Zerg out, or you could use Stalkers to like help kill the Roaches. Because yep. if you're if you're just using Adepts, you're just gonna fucking die, right? Um, so you not seeing that gas was a you like letting the probe die and also not seeing the gas was definitely not ideal for you. I would say if that happens to you a lot, if you're like forgetting to kind of like manage the, the the probe often, just go into the Zerg's base, check out what he's got when you first get there after the gateway, and then leave. <laughs> and then you can come back again um, around the time when you throw down your Nexus or like basically like two minutes. Like, okay. uh, it's, it's going to be a little bit after the Nexus if you go like two minutes. The reason why two minutes is a really good number to go for is because if you go in again at two minutes and the Zerg player is going for an expansion first, like a hatch first and a, into a pool, so hatch, gas, pool, something like that, something super standard, you'll get into the Zerg's base before he has Lings or Queens. So your probe will not die. Uh, and at that point too, the Zerg is going to be usually, if they go, especially if they go hatch, gas, pool, they're going to be making a choice now that you will clearly see, which is, are you still mining gas with three after 100 or not? Because if they go gas pool after hatch, like the, the way it is designed, is the way it's supposed to be designed, if the Zerg does a build right, is they're going to have basically just about 100 gas in the in the bank ready to go as pool finishes so they can start Zergling speed right away. I don't think anyone in Diamond 3 actually pulls off drones to, of the gas ever. Nope. Okay, so that would mean that you should probably, at the very least, always have a shield battery. Always, because okay. if you don't have a battery and someone's going to have the potential of lots of gas, you're just going to open yourself up to a chance to die. Mm -hmm. You don't have to make stalkers necessarily. You can make stalkers as like a last resort if he shows up at your base with roaches. But uh, <coughs> there's a couple cool things you can do that we'll talk about as we go further in here. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, yeah, anyways, S seeing gas is huge. You definitely want to just get in a read on it and you, you want to always do that forever. It's never going to not be a thing. Your second gas. Let me, it, I, it, everything is pretty late because uh, I had to chase a drone. Yeah, yeah, this one right here. He was there alive for like 20 seconds. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would, So here's here's something I would say too then. Just to make your life easier. So you can not deal with this so for such an annoying amount of time. Because you did see it like right there when you crossed it. And you go, oh, he's got yeah. a, a drone in my base. Honestly, what you could do is... When you're like, I would say, don't worry about it right now. Cause if this guy's going to proxy hatch you, then he's going to proxy hatch you. Uh, yeah. and then that's a whole different scenario to deal with. But what you could do to make this drone get the fuck out of there is when you go for probe, uh, 19 on your, um, so this probe goes to mine gas or it should be, I would say if this happens to you in the future, just rip your drone or your probe off of gas and this probe coming out of the Nexus. And instead of having only one go down there, have two go down there. Okay. And then what you can do, here's a, a cool micro trick you can do if you, uh, if you don't want to micro it, you don't have to micro it. But if you want to micro it, a cool thing you can do is uh, every time a probe attacks the drone, that probe is going to stop. And the drone is either going to be moving down or up or whatever. He's going to be doing a circle probably because he's going to run away from you, but not run out of the radius. So you can't build a nexus. He's going to just mm -hmm. run. Yeah. So you, you get the point. Every time the drone runs from the probe that get that just attacked it, it's going to basically like if, if this probe is right here and you got a probe like right here, for instance, uh, or for vice versa, if you have a probe like right here and if you have a probe like right here, like two probes coming to attack this, this drone. One of them is okay. going to attack, obviously, and when it does, it's going to stop. And the other probe is now going to cut in front of the probe that stops. Because the probe that stops, it just attacks, so it has to stop. That's just how worker AI works. This probe that's not attacked yet will now cut in front. And the fastest way you can get rid of the drone, if you want to micro this a little bit, is grab the probe that's stopped, and then don't just let it A-move, but go to where it's going to be. So if this is a clock and you attack it at, like, 10 o'clock... Have the probe now that stopped to attack go to 3 o'clock right away. Or like go to like 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock or okay. 6. Like just cut them off. Because the drone will literally be running in a circle every time. So let's just yeah. say like, you attack him again at 4 o'clock. And one of your probes is up here near like almost like 2.30. And the other probe is right at 3 when you hit him at 4. 
You can take the probe that just hit him and stop now, because the other probe will cut in front of him now. This probe can now go to like 8 o'clock, or like 9 o'clock, and just cut across straight away instead of chasing him in a circle. Right. It's, it's just easy, like you would just basically get him, get him off of that location within about maybe 6 seconds, or 5 seconds. It would okay. get rid of him super quick. And then again, even if you just let your drones, or uh, sorry, your probes A move, it would still get rid of him maybe within about 10 seconds. It still yeah. would get rid of him fast. Uh, and that's definitely worthwhile to get rid of him early. It's just a, an annoying timing in the early game. No, 100% for sure. I mean, it's super fucking annoying. Because uh, this is just delaying everything about your build. Yeah. I do like the effort you had there to not just chase it till you potentially could have killed it. And you, the second he got off, you just insta-built the Nexus. That's good. Uh, yeah, you'll just get rid of him way faster if you have two probes doing it. Just yeah. make sure if you do that, though, don't stop building probes. You got to really not fuck that up. Okay, and then I'm glad you didn't build another gateway there, even though you could afford it. That's really good. So your build order is correct. That's not a big deal right there. That gas, who cares? Yeah, I didn't care. And yeah, rally to the natural. Good job. Okay. <clears throat> so, at this point, here's what I would say you should do, okay? This is what I think you should do with this build particularly. I think this is a... You have two choices right now. You have the choice of scouting the Zerg player or the choice of denying the Zerg scout from you. Both are fine. Uh, if you go Stalker first, it's going to help deny the scout of your opponent. It's the more obviously the more defensive option because you have a Stalker. Yeah. Right, go ahead, sorry. No, it's okay. Oh, okay, I thought you were going to say something. Uh, so, the, uh, let me give you the point and then I'll go back to explaining it, okay? So, I want to make sure you understand the point that I'm going to build up towards here. More Adepts means more damage. If you add Stalkers in, it reduces the amount of damage you can do with the Zerg. So, already, automatically, if you go the Stalker route, you're already limiting the amount of damage you're going to do the Zerg by a little bit here. And I don't think Stalker's bad. I'm not saying it's bad. It, it's just a more defensive option. It means your adepts need to be more conservative. Uh, okay. it's, it's just how that goes. So, the two options you have, again, are if you go Stalker first, you should 100% be going Adept second. If you're going to be doing the build that we talked about, which is the Council Adept timing into Stargate. Mm -hmm. um, so, Stalker first into Adept second would be that that's okay. Uh, you kind of miss your window to scout with your adept a little bit there though. Like you still could, but there's a chance you could die. And I'll exp and we'll explain that further with the first adept in a second here about how you want okay. would want to do that. But again, if you go stalker first, the whole point there is to deny the overlord. And then if the zerg ever decides to all in you with with banes or with a roach warren, it'll just make having a shield battery and a stalker in your doorway really, 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 really hard to break for the zerg because the stalker is the tankiest unit you can make at this point in the game because uh, it's not light armored. <coughs> so, that would be that's just how soccer goes, right? It's it's just gonna yep. conservative play, defensive option. Now, adept in first instead is the more aggressive option, and what that can do is if you go adept first, it's guaranteed he will not die if you don't fuck him up with your micro, because there's no zergling speed. So what yeah. the first adept could do is you could run across the map really fast with your first adept, and you literally run all the way to like right here. Like right here, here, somewhere like right here with your first adept. It's going to get smacked by a queen probably three times or something like that. Who gives a shit? You have shields that it will generate. But yep. you, you cast the shade into the main as soon as you're like right here and you just immediately run away. Do not commit to that because you're not like you don't want to lose adepts because you, you know, you're going to be doing an adept timing. So it would make no sense to risk the first adept and lose it and then be like, oh, well, I'm doing more adepts to attack later. So you just literally get within close range to the gas, you scout, and you once again confirm okay. gas. But if, if I make an adept, I'm kind of forced to, to the move out, right? You are. If you make an adept and sit there, it's wrong. If you, if you want to sit there, yeah. make a stalker. You have to scout if you make adept. Because the reason why okay. is because if you go adept first and you don't have a stalker anymore, you need to confirm if you need to make a stalker. Or if you should start making stalkers. Because if all you're making are adepts and he shows up with roaches at your base really fast, you're fucking dead. Uh, and yeah. there's, there's there's like three signs to knowing if you're going to get attacked by something that's going to be really aggressive before your your timing is going to hit him. And that is, number one, did the Zerg player 
make a creep tumor or did the zerg player make a larva inject if the zerg player goes for a larva inject that is a sign of aggression okay that is not a sign of macro that is a sign of aggression most players yeah. that are going to macro are going to usually take their fucking third base and they're going to put creep going towards their third base to cover it otherwise they're going to have an oversaturated mineral line like crazy so it does not have to guarantee that it's going to be an attack but it's more of a indicator that it's like leaning towards attacking if they go inject first okay second sign is gas never being undersaturated if they just never rip a drone off gas ever that is a huge sign that tells you the zerg is going to be aggressive because otherwise the zerg is going to have like 300 gas in the bank or 200 gas in the bank and like what the hell are they doing with that gas so yeah. they better be doing something with it and if you don't see a layer or something like that uh, the only other option could be potentially like, what if he went for Overlord speed because he really wants to scout you? That's fine. That that, that happens. Um, but generally speaking, yeah. Still, crazy gas mining is going to have a limited economy. It's pretty expensive to maintain that. So that's a huge sign of aggression again. And then finally, the last sign is, it's the most obvious one. If you straight up just see, like if your first adept gets in the base and you see like a Roachworm that's basically finishing right now or a Bane Nest, that's finishing right now. That's fucking huge. That's like, okay, that's really fast. And you're going to be probably attacking me within the next, like, 60 seconds of this game. Okay. But either way, I make stalkers, right? If you see aggression, you make stalkers. Okay. So, uh, it, like, if you see roaches, for sure, you make stalkers. If you see a zergling bailing attack, at least have some stalkers, and then you can go back to making adepts. And if you want to squeeze in like one century here on either one of those, like one century also is fine because what you can do then is you can physically let him come in your doorway a little bit. Like, uh, so just know this is kind of, this is kind of tricky. Okay. This is important to know this. If you don't put your force field properly, you could fuck yourself. So if you want to make a century, the goal would be not just to put a force field down to zone him out of you, of your base, the goal actually is to let him come in your base just a little bit and then force field out the majority of the army. So you'd want to let in maybe like 10%, if that makes sense. Okay. So you like guaranteed thin yeah. his army out a little bit. So it, and it forces him to like lose some shit essentially. And it makes it, it just makes it easier to not die. But make sure if you do that, your unit is standing in the doorway and you put a force field and like you let the units ball up right here on you for a second and you put a force field right there. Like, you put a force field in a way that it'll wall this. Like, the edge, the right side of the gate to the north side of the core. And it doesn't push anything back here. Because if you... Sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, we're in the middle of a coaching lesson for people who are still listening. And we'll just jump right back into it from here. And then at Empire, I'll just... I'm going to stitch these videos together. So there might be it might be a little fucked up for a second for, like... Yeah, it's, it's okay. Yeah, but I'll stitch them together so you still have all the information and stuff. Um, but, yeah, anyways... So, what we were talking about for a brief moment there was uh, Impri was telling me how he wants to be more aggressive with his build. So, what I recommend for him to do would be uh, instead of... So, uh, like, you should be going Adept Opener and do all doing all the Adept Opener things we talked about. But now, mm -hmm. now instead, what you should also be adding into it as well that I would highly recommend to be super fucking annoying would be instead of Gateway Scouting... You could, in theory, and like again, this is something that's an option for you. You don't have to do it, but you could be more annoying with this. You could actually pylon scout instead, and then, so your like the way the build would go is, your probe pops out of the nexus. You build a pylon, and then you grab another probe when this pylon is probably like six seconds of the way in, co in construction, or like eight seconds into construction, like mm -hmm. about about like halfway ish. Uh, <laughs> and then if you get across the map, you do the same thing that he did to you, but you do it to him. You just literally have a probe here. <coughs> and when the drone comes down, you build a pylon. And you just fuck over his third base. Or his his natural and make him build at the third base. And if he doesn't leave, you can literally let the pylon finish. And if he does leave and his drone just disappears, you can always wait till the pylon's almost done and cancel it. And then, you know, be annoying. And what that does is it makes the Zerg have to take a third instead of the natural. And you're adept when it comes over to harass. And it has all this area here that is just like wide open for adept harass. So you can run here and, and shade this way. And then you know attack here and shade this way. And do it repeatedly over and over and over. And it's so fucking annoying. And then if you do that, if you actually commit to that, 
you should use two adepts to attack his mineral line. And I would say you should chrono boost out two adepts to do that, okay? If you okay. want to do that. Or go ahead, so you go. Oh, it's okay. Oh, I thought you wanted to ask me something again, sorry. No. Uh because I was just like, no, I, yeah, I was just, if you ever want to, if you ever do, so, okay, next time if you make a noise, <laughs> I'm just going to keep talking. But if you start talking, I'll stop talking. You can always talk right. over me. <laughs> I'm just trying to be, I'm just trying to be nice. Um, all right. So, uh, it, yeah, if you just know, though, if you want to do this, I highly recommend you do two Chrono Boosts on two Adepts. And the, the whole point of that is you want to get as much damage done as you can before he has Link Speed. And then you want to get the fuck out of there around 3.30. Okay? So All right. if the Zerg player is going for gas early, if you would confirm that, like like you should have, and you know, okay, he's got a normal speedling expand build, 3.30, you need to get the fuck out. Uh, so maybe you get out by like 3.20, 3.25, because 3.30, right around 3.30 to like 3.32, 3.33, that's when speed's going to hit. And if your adepts are still there and he's got speed now, like, it's nice if you make him make a bunch of lings, right? But if you just lose those adepts, it just makes your timing weaker again. So don't overdo it with the adepts. Just do as much damage as you can if you want to play that way. Uh, but just know, again, if you want to go adept first, you can still not... You don't. You can still go gateway expand and just do a single chrono on the first adept, and that's also totally fine. You don't have to do the pylon trick. It's just an option that'd be fucking annoying for Zergs to deal with. Yeah, he might as well pull some drones because he thinks it's a cannon rush. I mean, he maybe. I mean, uh, I think most Zergs won't do that. But then the re only reason why is because I think most Zergs can tell that if you put a pylon right in the middle of, the, of the, where the hatch is going to go, that's a really weak cannon rush because it's in the middle of nowhere. But if you put a pylon yeah. like right here, for instance, then maybe he'll pull drones because that's definitely more cannon rush looking. Uh, but yeah, but that doesn't block the hatchery, right? So you'd always want to put it there in anywhere in this circle right here. Um, but yeah, so now moving on. So. That's kind of the opener. The opener is pretty big, right? Of like the, how the initial part goes. Uh, but now we'll go deeper into it here. So you made the council shortly after the, the core. That's good. That's, a, that's correct. Now this gateway is too fast. So this is going to fuck up your build a little bit. Because what you want to be doing now is you want to be double chrono boosting probes out. And you want to be also not missing an adept at all. You don't want to miss any gateway time. And did you even chrono boost the gateway? I don't think you did. For the stalker? You should be even, even if you go stalker first, you should be chrono boosting this. Like always chrono boost, it, like guaranteed always one chrono on the gateway. And then, cause again, you're doing a timing. Uh, if you were doing like a defensive, like Stargate macro build, I'd be like, if you feel like you can get away with no chrono on the gateway, that's fine. Cause you have no plans to make a lot of gateway units. You're going to go Stargate probe bullshit. But you're actually doing an adept timing, so you want to really get those adepts out sooner. And making a stalker first again is totally fine if you want to go that way. You just want to get the, the adepts following it up to come out quicker because you could actually also scout with your second unit if you wanted to and get out. So the second unit would like need to get the fuck out quickly because uh, it's going to be really close to that zergling speed timing. But your second adept could actually, or your second unit, which could be your first adept, could in theory also scout across the map after a stalker. That could also happen. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so always chrono boost one time on your gateway. Only chrono boost twice in the gateway, two times in a row, if you're going to pile on block as natural and then be super annoying. And then what you want to do too is when you're about 36 supply, like 34 to, th I'll say 34. Let's make it fair. Uh, 36 is like, it needs to be perfect. 34 has a little wiggle room because if you miss it a little bit, 36 is actually okay still 30, 36 is still really good but at 34 supply you make two more gateways okay so you're making okay. this one way too early. Way too early what's up sorry no it's way too early yeah yeah, yeah. uh yeah. so some of that supply comes from your gateway making units and some of that supply also comes from just making probes uh and then i would say once you start the council maximum one more chrono boost on your nexus and you're done that's it and if this is a normal game, your Nexus should be done by now. But I know the drone denied you and annoyed you. Uh, so it would, at this point in the game, it would have been... You would have chrono boosted your gateway. And you could throw one chrono more at your uh, your Nexus here. And then you save your chronos from then on. And you throw a couple, like a chrono at your, uh, your glaive upgrade once that gets going. Um, so then all, the, the big thing too about like 34 supply 
is that it will if you're making adept adept stalker whatever you'll have enough of these units at your gateway to defend yourself if like four lings or six lings come to your base without speed the only thing that's scary is when the zerg gets speed lings and we, as we said before speed lings kick on about 330 and you should definitely be at 34 supply before 330 so that's when you'd wall it in and if this wall is going you have nothing to fear about speed lings being over here because the, the gateway will build fast enough to where like two adepts and a stalker or three adepts or whatever could actually kill the lings off of the wall easy peasy if he were to do okay. that. And then I would highly suggest as well, right about three minutes, or like basically after either after the council or about three minutes, make your battery. And the reason why again is because a battery, <coughs> the build time is 29 seconds. So if you average it off and just let's just say it's 30 seconds. <coughs> if you started at three minutes, it's gonna be done in time for the speed thing all in if he goes for that. Alright, and then you're not making an adept. This is humongously important. See, that, that gateway needs to be, like, pumping. And this needs to start a glaive upgrade as soon as possible. There you go. That was a mildly late. Not too bad, though. See, like, that stalker. I would, I, if I was watching you play this game next to you, I'd be like, that's okay. I don't mind that you killed that overlord, but make sure if that, let's just say you didn't do as much damage to it as fast as you did. And like, let's say he baited you out a little bit. Let's say he hit up here for a little bit and then he started flying. And let's say instead of it 328 right now, the clock in the game was 338. 10 seconds later, I'd be like, don't fucking go out there. Do not go out there. Because if you do, you're probably going to lose that stalker. Like this guy could be using that as the, uh, the destiny magnet. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, you just get fucking owned, and you're like, oh, okay, my stalker's dead. Or speedlings just run in into my natural. Exactly. Well, I mean, that, that shouldn't happen, simply because you should definitely, by now, have had a second unit pop out of that gateway. But you didn't chrono boost your gateway, and you also didn't even start the adept right away after the stalker. So your adept is super delayed now because of that. But, uh, yeah. The stalker would definitely die, though, if there were speedlings out there. But do I constantly uh, chrono boost the gates? No. Just, the, just once. Until just once. Just one, okay. Uh, twice if you're going to be aggressive with the two depth thing we talked about, and only once otherwise. Mm -hmm. And that's it. All right. Your chrono boost literally go like this. Gateway, initially, and that's, then you're done. Nexus, uh, so Nexus, then gate, then back to Nexus for a round of it. Then council, then you save it for Stargate. And then you're chrono boosting Stargate like a, like a machine at that point. This okay. right here again. Super scary. You're leaving the wall open again. And it's like in this like weird all in phase. And you also have no battery. So this is very susceptible to being all in and killed here. <coughs> okay. And then your other gateway up here, I would say, is uh, maybe a bit late. Not by much, though. Like, not by too much. So here's the concept. This is also why 34 supply is like a really good indicator, okay? For like when to take your gateways. You want your first gateway to make either three or four units before warp gate's done. Three units if you only chrono boost one time. Four units if you chrono boost twice. Okay? Then okay. the other thing you want to have happen is you want your warp gate to be finishing with gateways two and three. You actually shouldn't be making units out of these gateways before warp gate's done. If that happens, it means you either waited way too long to make the warp gate, or you started your gateway way too fast. Which is going to mm -hmm. disrupt other parts of your build, as we already talked about. So, uh, the perfect if you know how long it takes to build a gateway, it's 46 seconds. If you average it off, if, you start, if you're starting your gateways right about halfway into warp gate, because it's really 54 seconds out of 100, but you could just say 50 is also totally fine. It's like, because again, you don't have to make it so technical. It could just be something super close to that. That's easier to remember. Halfway into warp gate should be when you're starting your gateways, your extra gateways. Uh, okay. And then it'll pair up to where when the gateway's finished, it immediately becomes a warp gate. And then it all looks super Get coins good. at rally.io. And it just makes sense. 
Uh, Relic on user. Thank you for the Viper coin purchase. Thank you, dude. Okay, and then your warp gate is turning on. All right. Shit, this is a little rough. Hopefully you don't let that finish. Because that's taking your whole work gate right there. Oh, there you go. You canceled it. Good job. And then the... the So, this probe as well is... Versus a better Zerg would die. Because uh, there would be Zerglings camping your third base right now. So, what you want to do with your probe now... Is you want to have your Adepts do a particular kind of maneuver. And it would... Uh, it it would get you it would clear out your third and it would like guarantee that your third your probe's not gonna die and then it would give you still a nicely timed move out. What you would do is you'd walk all your depths out of your base, and you'd start a moving towards your third base with your depths first. And then okay. this should be around the time when your warp gate finishes and you are walking out of your base with the current depths you have, and then you also warp in new adepts and you you're a moving all of them towards your third. Now how I'm, many adepts do you want to have in total when you move out about well, depth timing? You want to have six if you go for multi-adept in the beginning, and you want to have five otherwise. Okay. I'm, I'm always <laughs> going with eight. Uh, it's very late, I would say. That's, that, that, that's something going on there. Your timing is going to be probably like at five minutes then, which it looks like it's going to be this game. You should be getting the Zerg's base like four and a half minutes. Like, you should already be almost at his base by now. Like, you should be like already going across the map right now. Um, so... Uh, the way it goes is is with your first gateway warp in, and again your your core was also late in this game if you remember because of the drone, because you delayed yep. it after your nexus, but your first warp gate warp in, you warp in, and then you a move towards third, and you also at the same time after you a move and your adepts are probably like right there by now, you phase or shade your adepts up north, so you'd be like shading like right here somewhere up on the mini middle of the mini map, and you'd be a moving down to your third, so while your shades making distance going north. It's faster than walking in a depth there, so that it makes it just makes more sense. Your depths a move towards the third to clear it out, so your probe can safely expand. And at the exact same time you do that, a probe is being pulled off the middle line to now go expand. And then you can go from there. Okay. And then behind that, you could be making two stargates, because you, you want to do the whole build exactly the way it was, right? You want to do two stargates behind this. This is optional. Uh, usually. By the way. I Usually I go Robo, not Stargate. Okay, so I was uh, so, I because I wasn't sure how much you wanted to know of the person I coached before with this type of build because it's this build turns into Stargates. Uh, no, it, normally, okay. nor, normally it does, but if you want to go Robo, Robo works. Robo is fine. It's Robo is the more defensive friendly option. Stargate is the more aggressive friendly option. The Stargate as well is easier to not get all in with, as uh, I, honestly because. How easy is it having void rays just attack fucking zerglings and roaches and stuff? It's you just a move it and you're like cool. In this game, if I would have had uh, void rays, I probably would not have died. Yeah, I mean, like it's it's the way way safer option. And then uh, like if you get all in, because just because they can't they're flying, they can't be hit by ground units. Um, Robo though has the ability to make immortals obviously, and then you can go into a faster like charge the arc on immortal timing has its own version of power. It's not like it's bad, it's just... It, it, Robo is a little bit more difficult to use if the Zerg player is like being very aggressive after your initial if attack. A, if a Zerg player plays macro, he starts pumping out unit at like 7 Surrey, right? Not always. Depends how much he wants the macro. He might pump units out okay. at like 530. Okay. The reason why is because not like 730 would be like that's like 85 drones and that's like that that's like a zerg player who has a nice amount of queens for creep spread he's got like max economy on four bases uh and he's got like all of his tech already he's done out he's like crossed all of his uh, t's and dotted all of his eyes he's done everything he needed to do but you might get zerg players out there that are like you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna get fucking hydra speed and i'm gonna stop droning at 52 and my third base is gonna look like shit and I'm just gonna go attack. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of zergs do that kind of stuff too. So, uh, yeah, like that could totally happen. Um, <clears throat> so we'll talk about Robo. If you want to go Robo, we can talk about Robo. That's totally fine. Uh, again, the power there is you have a really fast charge arc on Immortal timing to follow it up. So, we talked about the third. That's really risky. This thing could be denied in so many ways. 
And then now your depths are moving out. And then you see what I mean? Like how the, see how the, like the shade is faster than the adept? Yeah, it's this, faster. This is why you could just like have it clear your third out. And then, cause it's, it's pointless for these guys to be running this way and also shading this way. <clears throat> all right and then we'll see your uh your follow-up to this so right now automatically already your, your robo is started okay that's good i uh, question the positioning of it is a little questionable i would say just because it's so exposed towards the natural and on top of that it's also kind of like in front of the gas a little bit i would say i would prefer you to put the robo in the main that way, like, this pylon is so important now. It's like, this pylon is, like, critical. If this pylon gets killed in some way, you better, I hope, hopefully, you put, like, a second pylon here or something with where the, the robo is. Um, I'm not really sure. Yeah, no, I mean, it's just, it's just scary for you. I would say if you put it in the main, it's a little bit easier to make sure the robo doesn't get fucked over. Uh, but I'm glad that you built it before you attacked him. That's super important to do that. Behind this as well, I'm, I'm glad you went Nexus, then Gas. That's nice. I, I would prefer it to be the same way as that. And now if you're going to go Robo first, 100% if you're going Robo first, okay? Make a Templar Archives when you start charge. I usually make a Templar Archives before I move out, actually. That's good. You should be. You should be making three buildings when you move out. You should be making a Robo, a Templar Archives, and a Forge. Because if you're going to be going Robo first, you're going to be going Immortals, and you're going to be, like, going for a ground power army, and that means that you should be fully committing to that by going not only just Immortal and Adept or something like that, because that's vulnerable to a lot of things. The only, like, basically, like, if you think about it, like, Immortal Adept, that would beat Zergling, that would beat Roach, but it would lose to Baneling. So mm -hmm. there's a weakness there. But if you go Archon Immortal Charge Lot, suddenly the Archons now deal with Zergling Baneling really well. Um, so Archons are definitely huge there too. Um, and then Immortal is obviously good against the Roach side of things. Uh, so yeah, make, just make sure you're making all three of those buildings. And then I would say massively important too, when you build your third base, make sure you put either one or two pylons at the third. And if you put two pylons there, put it on both sides of the Nexus. But if you only put one pylon on the third, I would highly recommend you put the pylon on the exposed side of the Nexus. The reason why is because as soon as you start saturating your third base, you want to start adding gateways from the wall to cover the side of the Nexus. Right now, you can't do that. So it makes it harder to defend this base because for all you know, Zerglings could run this way. Now, I'm not saying they're going to go through the Fog of War, but they could run into this base here and they could get in your mineral line and be super fucking annoying, kill some probes and then run back away again. Because uh, there's no wall here. So you want to definitely make sure the pylon is like there instead if you're going to just make one. That way you can yeah. wall it off. Uh, and that would make your life a lot easier because you don't want to be... If you're going to be doing this style, gateways 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever, you want them at new bases, not at the main base. What time do you go up to 8 gates? <clears throat> uh, so if I were you, I would take an extra 3 gates to go to 6 gate. Uh, really fucking fast. Because you're going to easily be able to afford that by going Archon Immortal Charge Lot. Because you have the now you have the full benefit of going mass mineral focused units or mass gas focused units. Or anything in between. Like Immortals are between and then obviously Zealots are mineral, Archons are gas. So if you had six gates, you could easily afford that. And then I would say, honestly, if you made a fourth base, I would probably add on another like four gates there. Like if you, let's say you put a Nexus here, I'd be like Gateway, 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 Gateway. So, like, this whole chunk is, like, gateways right here. Uh, so your nexus is cover covered again. And then you have 10 gates at that point. Because okay. the reason why is you want to do a lot of gates faster than normal is because you're not adding in a lot of tech. Like, you're adding in temporary one-time tech type things. Like, you, you're you going for three tech buildings. You're going for a council, a Templar archives, and a robo. But only one of those buildings is actually going to have recurring costs. The council has a charge and it's done. The archives has... You could literally not even get Storm if you wanted to. You could just make Archon Immortal Charge Lot. Or if you went for Storm, then that's a one-time investment of Storm. And then it's over. But the Robo is the only thing you're actually making units on consistently. So more gateways is very acceptable. If you went for like a Robo and a Stargate though, for instance, I'd be like, okay, well now you maybe less gateways. Okay, what time do you would uh, add a second Robo? You... Don't even need to do that. 
Uh, I would say that only makes sense if the Zerg's going crazy rushes. Okay. Or if he's like committed to like going Hydras and you see he's also going into like Lurkers, then that's also fine. Uh, the two Robos against Lurker is amazing. Two Robos against like Mass Roach, Roach Ravager is amazing. But it, versus Lurker, I usually play Disruptor. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That works. Uh, two Robos definitely supports that. But you got to keep in mind too, you don't have to go double Robo because. Do you like going Sky Toss against Zerg? No. Okay, well then you gotta go double robo. So you're the you, you are actually then gonna be an early game to a mid game timing attack kind of a player. And that doesn't I would mean, love to finish it in the mid game. Yeah. Yeah, like it, it means you it doesn't it doesn't mean you can't take a fourth base. You could totally take a fourth base playing this way, but it means that you need to pile the pressure on like crazy. So that honestly only even reinforces my gateway choice for you even more. So you should actually be going up to ten gateways on your fourth base. Like three more gateways here for your, for your, uh, for your third to cover the side and also give you a nice, even, well-rounded number of gates. Even gateway counts is better than all gateway counts once you start adding in archons, so that you can just like spam out rounds of units and make it super nice and easy, and don't have templars just randomly there. Um, another four gateways for your fourth base, and I would say if you take a fifth base like here or here, same thing again. Add on like another four gateways again to your fourth, or uh, sorry, to your fifth. So now at your fifth base, you have like 14 gateways now. Okay. And if you're going to go double robo, you should add on double robo when you add on the four gateways to go to 10 gate. So it should go three gateways opener on two bases. And then you add on a robo off of three gateways. And then you add on three more gateways. So now you're on six gateway robo. And then, you're add on, then you add on one more robo again and four more gates. So now you're on two robo 10 gate. And then you add on, and then do not put the robo here, by the way. Don't put the robo at the fourth. Put the robo like somewhere behind that's more defensible. Like put it, I would say you could even put it here or you could put it another robo in your main. Don't put it like in the wall though, is what I mean. Like don't put like robo and then gate, gate, whatever. Just make sure the robo is tucked back a little bit because you don't want this thing to like have a chance to be killed by like a roach walk up, snipe it, run away. That's the last thing yeah. you want. Uh, so as long as it's tucked back a little bit, you're fine. Uh, so yeah, you'll add on the, the four gateways here and then the robo probably last so you'll be then you'll be on 10 gateway two robo and then every base you take beyond that I would say Keep adding on gateways To get to a total of about like 20 gateways Honestly, if you're gonna be really aggressive in the mid game go up to like 20 gates and two robos And then you'll have such a fucking solid remax potential repeatedly It'll allow it basically what it reinforces is it reinforces a hyper aggressive playstyle. That allows you to take trades and remax. Take trades, remax. Take trades, remax. And the whole point of trades and remaxing is try your best to not lose your archons and not lose your immortals. Try to only lose your zealots and then maintain a higher and higher and higher archon immortal count. And if you get to a point where you have like 10 archons and like 9 immortals and only now like 12 zealots, that army's fucking scary. Push his ass with that full on, and uh, you know you'll probably kill him. That's a super scary army. I need to add uh, sentries as well because forest fields are insanely OP. They're really good. Agreed. Uh, I would say you don't have to honestly, but it, if you get good with them, it's super nice. Like it's it, like if you know how to place zoning forest fields and you know how to uh, manipulate the environment and fuck the Zerg over that way. That's It's very powerful. It is a very powerful tool to use. Yeah. The only problem with it, though, is if you're still going sentries when they have lurkers, you're wasting your money. And if you're not going sentries as an opener, you're already pushing yourself closer and closer to the lurker phase of the game. And the last thing you want to do is have a thousand gas and sentries, and you're trying to push into lurkers. Yeah. So be very careful about that. Uh, like, if you're actually going to add in sentries to your build... Keep in mind too that you're gonna reduce your archon count because you're that's now gonna replace archons essentially. So, all right. I would say try not using sentries for now. The only time I would ever say sentries might make sense is if the Zerg player is a roach user, like massive roach ravager user. Because then what you could do is even even though ravagers can bust down force fields, and the time it takes the ravager to shoot a corrosive vial off and then kill the force field, you can always reapply it. Uh, but the amount of time it takes for the Ravager to kill the, to kill the force field, a lot of roaches will already die to whatever's trapped in front of the force fields. So you could... It's actually a wasted bile as well, right? It's not really wasted bile, because, like, 
it allows him to re-engage the fight, but and also it allows his like what if he wants to like evacuate the other roaches inside. Um, but it's it's it, it works really well against Roach Ravager because the, people don't think about the amount of time that it takes for the bio, for the bile to like connect to the first field and then allow you to uh, move around again freely. And in that time, immortals are just pounding roaches in the front, and the Zerg might lose like 15 roaches by the time it takes them to crush a couple force fields. So, I mean, that would be huge. Uh, yeah. But yeah, do not. I would say, do not go sentries against someone who's going hydras, because if they go lurkers behind that, like, I would. Okay, this is probably the best way to explain it. You could win going sentries against hydras. It is very doable. But you, it like puts you into a position that's harder to deal with now because you need to fucking win early before lurkers are out, and you need to understand that once lurkers are out, you need to stop making sentries. If you're still making sentries and lurkers are out, you're throwing the game in the trash. All right. So trust Arkans and Immortals then. They're really good. Yeah. I mean, you can, like again. My opinion of Protoss is sentries work great against people who go Master of Travager. Super good, and there's a lot of zergs out there that do that. Uh, but if you're, if it's like a zergling user or like a ling bane user, you don't need sentries, because all that happens then is you. It seems like some people out there might be like, well, why? They're all melee units, and sentries make the melee units not be able to hit you. In theory, yeah, that's great. But if you're diamond, and if you look away for two seconds, and you look back, and you're like, oh fuck, and all your sentries die to banelings, that wouldn't happen if you had archons. If you had Archons, Archons straight up can just, like, slam their fist on their chest to be like, come here, like a fucking gorilla. And then Banelings run into the Archon and die. The, the Banelings die. Same thing with Zerglings. The Zerglings run into Archons and die. Like, Archons eliminate Lingbane like crazy. Especially if you have, like, six of them or eight of them. Uh, it's not even hard to deal with. So, but Road Traveler is way more manageable because it's not the fight's not going to be over in one second. And being able to, like, trap some of the roaches in and zone out some of the other ones for brief moments of time is actually pretty nice. Uh, that would be my opinion. But, uh, you know, you're the boss, right? I mean, if you want to try sentries against Zergling Baneling and Hydras, which could turn into Lurkers, just, you gotta not fuck that game up at all, because it's, it's very easily gonna slip out of your fingers if you don't watch every single second of your army. But for Guardian Shields against Hydras, it's great, right? Uh... I'm not going to say no, but if you're going to do that, one century max. Don't make a lot. Like, literally one century and you're done. Uh, yeah. It the, the the thing about century 2, though, in that, in that realm, is the century is going to be way slower than zealots. And the zerg is probably also going to just not stand there and face tank you. The zerg is probably going to want to kite you a lot. Especially if he's on creep. And if the Zerg is kiting your zealots and running away from you and trying to, like, not just stand there and eat it to the face. Because uh, because if he does, he'll probably lose. Archon Immortal gets way better trades if the Zerg just stands there. Uh, and if he's kiting away from you, your zealots are going to be running out of the bubble probably a lot. Just in, just in general. I, I'll, also, yeah, I'll, just, I'll just say, if you're going to make sentries the way you, it sounds like you want to use it, just stop at one. And call it a day. Uh, and you can use the Guardian Shield that way. And yeah, that, that's fine. I'm not going to say that's bad. Uh, just definitely don't make a lot. Because I'm just... Uh, the, the whole point of what I'm, I'm... I'm witnessing you have a problem if you go mass entries. Which is why I don't want you to do that. Because you just don't have Archons then. And Archons are such a key integral part of this whole composition. Okay. Alright. So, back to your attack. Um... You phase in with your shade. Uh, not opposed to what you just did. You just killed a queen, and you shaded past it. That's uh, not bad. I mean, killing queens is definitely going to be a nice thing to do. And now you've also drug his other queen out to the natural, and you're in his main now. Just make sure with this attack, you're always maximizing your, your shade every time. And you can always cancel it or you know go to it. So like mm -hmm. right now, you should already be shading right now, right here, to the natural again. Okay. And then like right there, that was not ideal, 
the way you ran down to the natural. And the only reason why I say that is because you want to actually pull the Zerg. So there's there's two things of what you need to be doing. It's like a it, it's what is like a, a push and pull maneuver. You're you want to push the Zerg one way, or you sorry, you want to pull the Zerg one way, and then you want to push him in another way. So you want to make the Zerg get as thinned out as possible. And when you actually get your depths and your shades closer together, if you're running, if you're ever running the same direction your shades are going, which is almost what you did here, to a, you did it to a decent degree, you make it really easy for Zerg to defend this. You want to always be running opposite of where your shades are going. And you want to be having your shades pull the Zerg somewhere else entirely. And you want to push the Zerg as much as you can in the moment of time to make him have to come defend the actual depths themselves. And if he does, you can shade in somewhere else. And if he doesn't, you can cancel the shade and stay there and keep pushing the Zerg there. So, like right here, what I would say you should have done when you attack the drones like this. Like right here. Shade. You should have already been shading right now towards the natural or the third. And the drones are running away from you, right? And I would say let your shades be the thing that deals with that now. And run your adepts deeper into his natural, or sorry, into his main, and kill whatever's left. And whatever is left is literally one drone. And then you could even uh, start killing his larva, honestly, on the hatchery, because adepts kick the fucking shit out of larva. They're light, okay. they're light units, and they almost get one shot by adepts. They actually do get one shot by adepts if you have uh, weapon upgrades. Or sorry, they, they they never do. I'm just joking. They have they have ten armor. What am I talking about? They'll they'll just die really fast. Is my point I'm trying to make here. Um, and then if the Zerg also brings all of his Urshas back to the main to get you off of his fucking main, you know, that's great. That's good news for you, right? Because that's, uh, now that's a, you know, more open mineral line in the natural. And you're also making him make a fuckload of units because you're drawing the fight out as well, which is also what you want to do. You want to, like, make your adepts last as long as possible. Uh, you could also even kill the pool. You could actually target the spawning pool. And that's also a lot of pressure on Zerg if you kill that because that's no more Zerglings, no more Queens. Uh, super annoying for Zerg. No static D. Yeah, my problem is macroing behind this attack. I was like 100% focused on this attack. Yeah, and it's also like that's also a moment where you have like so seven seconds is every time is every shade. Okay, it's always seven seconds, and every time you start a shade, you should know in your head you should be paying attention within about five seconds of that because you need to have a second to react and then have a second to make a choice to go let it finish or cancel it. So if you would have killed these drones, like we talked about, and then you would, cause like, think, think about it for a second. Like, we'll go back to this one more time. Look at what happens when you chase the drones, right? So if you shaded towards the natural or towards the third, and you ran back towards the main, look what happens when you chase the drones anyways. You kill one drone, right? You just, the, the result of you chasing the drones from that point on was killing one drone. There was one drone in the main anyways. So you would have gained no benefit one way or the other doing what you just did here. It's the same result either okay. way. And the real thing that's happening here is, is you're allowing the roaches to group up on you closer to your shade because you're running with the shade. So your, your shade's already two seconds down and you're still on top of your shades. So this is just, again, going to be easier for Zerg to get on top of you when the shade's over. Uh... But now, what if you were? What if you oh, moved into the main base for a yeah. second there? Like you were like, okay, move back to the main mineral line, and while that happens, I take a moment to macro. <coughs> I mean, that's what you should be doing. Now, also on top of that, you should also be. Uh, you should. So okay, this is something that I I can't really tell you. Do this, and then you do this. This is something you have to experience for yourself, and it's it's macroing during a fight. But what you should be doing during a fight is every single time you have a moment where you know you can't control your units. Like right now, for instance. <laughs> like you, you're like, well, what am I doing? Am I aim moving my adepts right now? No. I'm move commanding to an area. And I've already done the shade. I legit can do nothing because if I, if, I, if I move command it, I'm waiting. If I aim move it, they're just going to smack roaches right now. And the last thing I want to do in this position is smack roaches. Because I want to maximize my damage on the drones right now so you definitely want to move command and while you're move commanding you're, again you're waiting and while you're waiting you should be hitting your hotkeys of five six four like checking your macro cycles 
because right now again you're not making a de you're not making probes you're not making a anything out of the robe or your robe isn't done but you're not making probes you're not making anything out of the gateways all your gateways are ready to go and you haven't made a single unit since you moved out with these adepts so your gateways have been ready to go for a while so what you can do is you can double tap your hotkey of gateway or whatever and be like it does i don't build it as sloppy as you fucking want who cares be like three more units here whatever the, and I would say the unit you should be making right now would be, this is when you can make sentry, if you want to make sentry at all. This is when you should do it. And then also make, start making zealots. And then as soon as your robo's done, start making immortals. And then as soon as your uh, your temple archives is done, make rounds of archons when you have gas to do it. Otherwise, zealots are in immortals. Okay. And now you're in the third. So, same thing again here. The, you did a lot of damage at the third. That was nice. I would say while you're here, don't run back to the natural. And then shade again. Because you're like, the drones are dead. You should kill the larva. And then shade back to the natural. And then literally run all the way to like right here when he comes over to you. Like, stand your adepts right there and smack the hatchery. Like, lure him out of position. Instead of forcing okay. him and, for, and like attacking. Uh, because... Long story short, you're already winning the game anyways, the longer you draw this out. Because if you make the Zerg make more units and more units and more units and more units and more units, and you're over here making probes, that's amazing for you. Because you're still also making immortals and other units, so gateway units to support it anyways. Uh, and it also, if you're not having to look at your depths every single millisecond, you have a moment then to be like, well, if I'm going to attack the kill some larva, after I kill the drones and then walk my adepts to like right there and hit the hatchery while I shade over here, I can now go for more gateways. Another round of units. Start my immortal. Get my upgrade going off my forge. Come back to my units. Check. Am I gonna, what am I going to do? Confirm or deny the, the shade in or not shade in. <coughs> and then once you get to a point where the Zerg... If, if the Zerg actually allows you to be in his base for so long... Like let's say you've been in his base for a full minute... And you're not watching drones pop out of his larva. You're watching roaches continuously pop out of his larva or something like that. Whenever you see eggs pop, you could then have a choice to go, you know what I can do now? Shade away from his base and then leave him up here or like shade over here or something like that. And then just forget about your depths for a moment. And then when the Zerg attacks you, if the Zerg decides to attack you, I'll go, all right, adepts shade back in and then forget about him. And you just do a counterattack in his mineral line while he's trying to all in you. You don't like you don't have to push these to their death every time. This is already so much like the the biggest thing you want to understand about how much damage you're doing is is do you have an equal or better economy than the Zerg? And if the answer is yes, you're already winning the game. Because you are making an army that counters that. Like Yeah, we do mortals and uh, maybe some stalkers. Honestly, you don't even need stalkers at this point. Like you're, you're. Like, once you have immortals going, you're already beyond the point of needing stalkers. This would only, you would only need stalkers if these roaches were beelining your base right now, and he's just like he's going fucking all in, and you'd know that because he never comes to defend his base. He'd be like, okay, are you just gonna let your third die? Like the, the, the so I want to make sure this is clear. Okay, I want to make sure that you're very clear on this. Don't randomly just run away every time and be like, cool, I'll run away now. I feel like I did the damage. What I would tell you to run away would be uh, when your adepts are attacking something and then roaches come over to attack you and you're now having to fight a couple roaches, but also your shade is being covered by a lot more roaches. <coughs> and you're like, okay, well, no matter where I go, he's got roaches. Then you could cancel your shade and run away while shading away and then leave his base. And... You don't necessarily... Okay. Like, you could even recall as well. That's also a thing you could do. You could recall too. Uh, and you don't have to, like, get away with all of your adepts. Some of them might die. But even if you got away with, like, two adepts, two adepts could come back in and be annoying as hell later on. It's it's just confirming that he's making a fuckload of units. And then, again, your robo should be able to res respond to this with roaches. Or with uh, with immortals. And if you see... Here's a, here's another thing. Instead of, here's a better idea than making stalkers one more time. If you see a Zerg player who's going to go mass all in here, he's just like, you're like, wow, this guy's drone count sucks ass. 
And he's making lots of roaches. And he's making way too many roaches. Just Chrono Boost your Immortals. Repeatedly Chrono Boost Robo. And you will make two Immortals in the time you could make... Or sorry, you'll, you'll make like three Immortals in the same amount of time you would have made two, essentially. And more Immortal means more Roach Death. So, like, Immortals are fucking amazing against Roaches. As we all know. Yeah, I need to get my macro behind this attack better. It's actually what kills me when I do the adapt timing. It's because you've paid too much attention to the adapts. Like, for too long. You have no... You're, you're not adding in macro cycles. And again, macro cycles are the moments yeah. when you pull the Zerg. So, when you're standing here... When you when you shade it in... Uh, rather this. When you attack the queen and shade it in, that's a macro cycle. You can't do anything there. You're waiting. Then, your macro cycle ends when you attack the drones. You chase the drones. Adept shades up, like right here. You shade. He runs away to the natural. You walk your adepts back to here. Pull him further away from where your shades are going. Macro cycle. For like five seconds again. And then you come back and you, uh, the, you, you do a couple things. You warp in a few units. Make a building really fast. And then look at your the, the, come back and look at your adepts and go, good or bad. If it's bad, hit escape. If it's good, let it go. And then do your thing. Attack for a little bit. As soon as the adept's shade goes off again, macro cycle. Every time you start casting this, that is a macro cycle. Because you shouldn't be chasing your shade. You should be running away from your shade. Opposite of where it goes. Yeah. And then that will help you a lot at actually mixing macro into your build. And also at the same time, not throwing your depths in death. Because again, it's a win-win for you anyways, the longer they live. Because the longer they live, the more the Zerg freaks out. Like, watch, watch his production really fast here. What's he going to make again now? If he makes Roaches, or Zerglings or something right now. Yeah, see that? He's fucking dead now. Already. Like, if you don't die, if your macro cycles exist, you already win the game. Because this dude is not making drones. He's also not mining anything either. He's literally just going, okay, all in. I'm all in now. I have no choice. And what happened there was, uh, if we look at your depths one more time. Uh, 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 or, uh, sorry, I went too far. Okay, so like right here. Right here. So your adepts kill a couple drones, and then you run into the roaches again. Okay, you back up for a second. And this is this is the moment when I would say, you need to back, back the fuck up. Because he has... You've done a lot of damage here. You did a little bit of damage here. You did damage here. You've been in his base for oh, about a minute. Like, or, yeah, like, I killed like 16 drones. Yeah, you, you killed a ton of stuff. And you you it's actually more like almost 40 seconds you've been in his base for. But you have roaches on you, and you have roaches chasing your shade. This is the moment when I would say you should probably leave his base. If you want to use these again later, you have to realize once there are units on both sides of your adepts, the only thing you're going to do now is you're going to sacrifice them and do damage in the process. That's that that is what if you confirm this shade in, that is you're you're confirming death on these things. Because you're you have units on both sides. There's queens and roaches on one side and there's roaches on the other side. You could easily run away from these roaches. They will not kill you. They would maybe weaken one of your adepts a little bit. You'd run away. You could shade again even further away and leave. And then come back again at a future point in time. But this right here, you know what this does right here? This guarantees you're going to get attacked right now. So this is another mindset, okay? If these adepts would have ran away right here, if you canceled the shade and ran away and you went to like right there, you know what the Zerg does? He may or may not counterattack you because he has a feeling of going, they're still out there. Fuck. Is he going to come back? It really is up to the Zerg. Like, he might just go, fucking YOLO, let's attack. Or he might go, okay, I'm going to just try to spread my, my roaches out and, like, make drones again. But the second you let everything die, like this, you killed three drones right there. Four, almost, I think, no, three drones. And then your adepts are all dying now. And now you kill one more drone. And you lose... Okay, you actually saved the last two adepts. But now you're gone. You're fucking out of there. That right there is... Like, obviously, the, you did a good job with the adepts, like, annoying him otherwise. Being aggressive and fucking over his, his drones. And he made lings and roaches. And he fell apart. That was his problem. He fell apart. So now he is all in. But the second you lose your adepts and they're they're gone, 
you pull the trigger and him attacking you now. That is 100% happening now. So you should already yeah. know that he's coming, like, right fucking now. And the only time that, that I would say that if that would make more sense to it, to really push your depths to the limit, if you were macroing like a fucking beast and you were 100% confident that you were not going to break here, and a guaranteed way to do that would be, like, for instance, you had a wall here to use with gateways. You had a battery at your third as well. You have a battery at your natural with more wall in. You have uh, your robo pumping like crazy. You are chrono boosting it, which is correct. But how long did the robo sit there and do nothing, right? And also, uh, yeah. So the robo sat there for like 20 seconds doing nothing. <clears throat> Yeah, he started building unit at six or like five fifty six or some shit like that. So it was about twenty seconds in idle time on the robo. So that's just yeah, macro cycles with the adept shade, and then you'll have a way better chance of not dying to shit like this. And then again, it shouldn't be stalkers; it should be adept. it should be zealots with immortals and archons. All right. And then repeated chrono boosts on. Okay, you're doing it. Good job. That's correct on that. How you're doing that? Yeah, stalkers just suck dick at this point. They're just gonna die every time. Uh, if you don't have blink at this point in the game, and if you don't have like Colossus, Sentry, to cover the stalker as well, or at the very least blink, your stalkers are going to be worth like nothing against this kind of an army. You're just going to die super easy. So it would only make sense to go stalkers in the early game if it's like if you're not exposing or defending an exposed area, but instead you're defending like a wall in, and the only choice is adept or stalker. Then yeah, you need stalker so you can deal with the roaches. But if you have Immortal, you don't want Stalker. Yeah. Oh, oops. So, yeah. It's, uh, like, basically what just happened there to you was Ling's countered all your army. You didn't have enough actual st Ling stoppage. You had, you had the ability to go charge the Archon, and you made neither. So, yeah. like, you made very little zealots. You did make a couple zealots, but it was very little. It was, like, three zealots. So you, you really just didn't have enough of a front line to, like, stop the links from running you over. And then it, he was just consist consistently surrounding all of your stalkers and your immortals and just running you over uh, with everything. And your immortals and stalkers are sitting there getting stuck on shooting zerglings all day. So a little rough for you in that regard. Uh, fourth base was good. I liked it. But, uh, yeah. Hopefully that like any questions about what we just talked about? Hopefully that makes sense. With the No, nah, it makes sense, yeah. Okay. Um Yeah. Uh and again, don't don't always feel the need to feel like you have to kill Zerg to be ahead of Zerg with your adepts. The fact that you made him pull his mineral line is already a win for you. That's super big. That's so much wasted mining time that he's lo losing now. That's twenty two drones of or if, if assuming none of them died, 22 drones of losing mining time, and that is uh, 16 of those are mining minerals, and every second he's not mining minerals is 16, 32, 48, blah, blah, blah. Every second that goes by is 16 more minerals that he's missing, 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 missing. Um, and then you made him not only pull the main mineral line, you made him pull a natural mineral line as well, twice. That's fucking huge. So your adept attack... Did a good job. It could have been better, as we talked about. But overall, did a really good job. Like you said, though, your macro behind it definitely needs some improvement. Uh, you also never even went above three gateways. And then you took a fourth yeah. base. So if you <clears throat> if you also follow the build order we kind of talked about at the very start of this video, uh, like the ten gateway, two robo here, six gateway, one robo here, three gateway, one robo here. If you, talk, if we, if you follow that concept, you'll have so much more to work with. Uh, just production wise and you won't have the problem of like not being able to spend your money I would say do you do you last I have a question for you do you use camera hotkeys no okay that, that's fine you don't have to it's fine so just double tap like 5-5 five, five when you want to warp in some units when you're like so the, the micro would be this adepts shade left move command right Double tap. Five. I usually have the pile and hotkey in the natural. I don't know why I didn't do it this time. I mean, if but that if, if that works for you, that's fine. Yeah. It, as, as long as you have something that you can just double tap, come back to your base, go quick brrr, warp and round, and then double tap your depths again, and you're back in the base again. And now you can be like, am I going to do the shade or not? 
at the bare minimum you should be doing that and then if you want to take it even further what you can do as well is you can uh, uh, you know between a depth round or between a shade rounds because again that's every, it's every 11 seconds you can do this so it's really fast the next depth shade let's say your gateways are in cooldown so you cast the shade move, move the shade one way move your depths the other way come back to a base and go probe it does not have to be pretty just be like Shift click, pylon, 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 mineral, mineral line. Cool. And then double click your, uh, your double tap your depth hockey again. So you're back here again and do your thing again. Make sure that you're using every adept cycle with a macro round. With something. Either building buildings or building units. Okay. And to be fair, one more thing to say. If you're building units that you don't actually have to be there to do, like Immortal or Probe, you should be doing that during your Adept attack waves as well. Like, if, for instance, if your Adepts are here, and I go, let's just, let's just pr pretend. Your Adepts are on 1, your Nexus is on 2, your Robo is on 3, okay? Let's just pretend that's what they are. 1, attack move. Okay, drones are running away. 1, move command from right here to right here. It's a very little distance. It'll take you 2 seconds or 1 second to do that distance, right? But you can't do anything in that moment of time because you're waiting not only for your adepts to move, you're also waiting for an attack cooldown. Let's say let's say that same thing again. Let's say there's roaches, three roaches right here, and let's say you have eight adepts, and you attack, and then you want to move away from the roaches, or you want let's just you know what fuck, fuck that. Let's say there's a queen here and five adepts, and let's say your adepts attack, and you're waiting for attack cooldowns to make a choice of what you're gonna do. When you're doing something that you can have no control over anymore, because the AI is like already has its job essentially, you need to be cycling in two, three, or whatever your hockeys are for Nexus and Robo as well, because you can make those without looking at them. So you need to really cycle them in repeatedly a lot, more than your shade yeah. cooldowns. Just try to remember. Try to get comfortable with adept attack. Like this is again, this is why something that I said that only comes from experience. Because you're not going to be comfortable right now when you're not used to it. But when you get used to it and you do it quite a bit, you're going to feel like once you set it up, there's nothing else you can do for the next couple seconds, anyways. So you might as well keep tabs and check on your macro. And then if you get in the habit of doing that, your macro will not suffer nearly as hard. You won't miss probes. Your third base will come up really well saturated. Your fourth base will be really well saturated really fast. Your immortal count will be high as fuck by the time you're ready to defend something or attack something. Uh, things like that. And then, and then obviously you need to just check your gateways and make sure... Like for instance, you could check Robo, make sure it's producing a immortal. Uh, probes, make sure they're producing probes. Or Nexus, make sure they're producing probes. You could even check really fast. Uh, you can hit the hotkey for your, your gateway and just go, how long do I have to wait until my next round? And it might be only halfway done. So you go, okay, next Adept Shade, we're, uh, we're going to send out uh, you know, the Adepts and I'm going to do a quick warp in as well. So it's like just giving yourself a, a tab on like when to do it. And then if let's just say for whatever reason, you make gateways, uh, gateway units off of the... Uh, the current adept shade you're doing and then 11 seconds later your next adept shade goes off and you check the gateways again and you and you you forget you're like did i just do it again oh no i uh, yeah yeah i did okay yeah I, I just did it now because my gateways are only like halfway cooled down right now makes sense yeah so it's just it's just giving yourself reminders essentially while you're being annoying because you want to know the problem you're having i can guarantee what you're doing so what i'm saying for you to do is hard and it's something you need to work on. But what you're doing right now is you're doing this. Adept shade up there. Attack queen, attack queen, attack queen, attack queen, attack queen. Shade up here. Okay. Chase drone. Attack. Move, 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 move. Attack drone. Move, 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 move. Attack drone. Move, 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 move. Shade. Attack drone. Move, 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 move. Attack drone. Like you're just fucking spamming commands in your adepts. And you're doing nothing. You're, you're tunnel visioning essentially is what the term is. Yeah, exactly. So stop tunnel visioning. You got to st start understanding there's only so much you can do. It'd be like someone saying, um, drink that water, and you're in the middle of drinking the water. Drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it. <laughs> you're like, I am. I fucking can't drink any more faster than I am, dude. Relax. I'm already drinking the water. <laughs> so it's just re repetitive commands, essentially, is unnecessary. Um, yeah, just as long as they're going the right way, that's all you need to do. Uh, and then, yeah, and then once you get really comfortable with this, 
you'll actually be able to weave in macro with micro seam seamlessly and it'll feel really good. That's more of like a master's level technique right there, I would say. Uh, but Diamond League is just practicing getting that set up, more or less. All right. All right, man. Any any final questions about things? No, I'm fine. Okay. So, good luck. I hope this helps you, dude. And uh, Yeah, it does. Just know, if you ever want to switch it up, you don't have to go Robo as well. Like, it's good. It's a good choice. Though. I'm, not, I'm not trying to make it sound like it's bad. It's a good choice, but the power of the Robo is heavy gateway count, heavy aggression in the mid game, which is, the, you already confirmed that's what it, you like to play like, so Robo is definitely up your alley. Uh, and that's when would you move out again if you have, like, mid game aggression? Like You should move out, probably. Five immortals. You, they, you should base that decision off of how well the early game went for you. Like, if the Zerg is failing repeatedly, you could move out at, like, 150 supply. If the Zerg is formidable, maybe move out at, like, 180 plus. And then when you do move out, like I said before, this is critical. Try not to lose your Immortals and your Archons when your army is mostly Zealots. Your army is 100% going to be mostly Zealot the first time you move out. But then when the next time you move out, if you, let's say let's say your army is 25% uh, Archon, 25% Immortal, 50% Zealot. Don't lose your Archons and Immortals there as well. If the fight, if the Zerg is putting up a fight, once your Zealots start bleeding out, try to like kite back with your Archon Immortal. And then your zealots will die. But now, suddenly, your army is, instead of being 25, 25, 50, percentage-wise, now your army is 30, 30, 40. And then after that, maybe it's 35, 35, 30. You get what I mean? And, like, suddenly, you're at a point where your army is, like, 40, 40, 20, 40% 40 Archon Immortal and only 20% uh, uh, Zealot. Then you're, you're, you're fucking super powerful at that point. And that's when you have, like, 10 Immortals and, like, 10 Archons. And you're just cranking out damage like crazy instead of only having like three archons and like four mortals or something like that. All right. All right, dude. Well, good luck. Thanks for doing a lesson. And uh, thanks you. Yeah. I'll edit it. I'll snip it together to where it's only one video, and uh, I'll have it to you by probably tomorrow or maybe the day after. Yeah, it's fine. No worries. All right. Hey, Bree. All right. Much love, dude. See you on the stream. Goodbye, and thanks. All right. Thank you, man. Alright, Impri's a nice guy. Did you, hear how he, did, you, did you guys hear how he left the call just now? He's a super nice guy. Impri's a fucking gem. But, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, coaching lesson. Hope it helps you as well for Protoss players out there to learn more about how to make things work. But I will see you guys in the next one, in the next video, whatever it might be. Uh, thanks. Subscribe if you enjoy. I never say that, but there you go. I said it once for the year. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace, guys. See ya.